Local 4 News starts now with a breaking news alert. And we have two big breaking stories. First at four, an intense manhunt for a serial killer suspect in Detroit ends in gunfire, leaving that suspect dead. Also, a student drowns in the pool at Mumford High School. We have crews working both stories right now. Let's start with the search for that armed and dangerous man. It has all come down to a deadly ending in Oak Park. Let's go over to Local 4's Victor Williams. He joins us live from the scene. He was the first crew on the scene. Victor, what can you tell us? Well, first off, this was a very intense situation. Me and my cameraman, Zach, we were the only ones here when we saw everything going down. We saw officers rushing to that backyard that you're looking at right over there on Ridgedale and Oak Park. We heard one single gunshot, and we believe that that was Mr. Kenyell Brown shooting himself. We saw him then being taken away on the stretcher. Right now, the chief is doing a press conference right over there. We pulled ourselves away so we could do this live shot really quickly, but once again, it looks like Kenyell Brown is in custody. Of course, he did shoot himself. Reporting live, Victor Williams, Local 4, but we are going to go ahead quickly right now to something that the chief said earlier. I was seen by a clerk at the bookstore. He'd been there in the past. Uh, in the past, he would uh, ingest what uh, he described as smoking uh, rock cocaine. On today's date, no evidence that he was doing that. However, he was in there and they wanted him to leave. But they recognized him from uh, news reports. So at that point, um, uh, 12 precinct responded in very quickly. A couple of our neighborhood police officers were first on the scene. Uh, he had already left the location, so they began to check the area. At some point, they became aware that he may have crossed 8 Mile into the city of Oak Park. Uh, he did do that. Uh, we then, as we continued our search, certainly with the assistance from Oak Park, uh, we then began to search the area. And at some point, Oak Park and our officers, after there was a canine search, saw him. Uh, he began to evade the officers, attempt to uh, detain him. Yeah. At some point, as he jumped a fence and went into a rear yard of a residence, he fired a single shot uh, into his head. Now, the homeowner, they understood all this was going on. They noticed the man in the backyard, and from there, they called police. And, of course, they all ended up here to take this man into custody. We'll have more of that at 5 p.m. For now, we are reporting live in Oak Park. Victor Williams, Local 4. All right, we'll let you get back to the Chief's press conference and gather more information. We'll see you at 5. Thank you, Victor. We're also following a tragic story from Mumford High School in Detroit. The district says a student was found submerged in the swimming pool and then rushed to the hospital. Let's go to Rod Maloney. He's at the school, and Rod, efforts to save him just did not pay off. Yeah, they, uh, they made valiant efforts to try and save him. We saw the ambulance leaving, and they were working on the young man uh, in the ambulance on the way to the hospital, but it was to no avail. This is Mumford High School. The swimming pool is uh, right in the back entrance over here, and uh, parents who are coming and picking up their children are just finding out about this now. There had been no announcement made in school, but the children certainly knew about what had happened, and the district is now confirming that the young man had gotten into the pool and uh, drowned but we're not sure the exact circumstances. In the, in the meantime, uh, one of the things that they are saying is that the teacher who was in the pool area uh, pulled the young man out of the water, tried to do CPR on him. Uh, they certainly called 911, and then the professionals stepped in to try and help out, but uh, the young man did perish here at the school. Um, much to talk about in terms of the parental reaction. We have that. We'll have that for you coming up on Local 4 News at 5. In the meantime, the school district says that they're going to be putting out a robot call to parents and also what's going to happen is that they're going to be making counselors available to the students uh, here this afternoon and again tomorrow. We'll have more again at five o'clock. So reporting live from Detroit right now, Rod Maloney, Local 4. How awful. All right. Thank you, Rod. We'll see you at five. It is a very busy news day and the coronavirus crisis. It is another watershed moment in the Me Too movement. The one time powerful movie producer Harvey Weinstein is now a convicted sex offender. A jury in New York City this morning found Weinstein guilty of third degree rape and criminal sexual acts 
in the first degree. He was found not guilty of three other sex crimes that carried harsher sentences. Kimberly Gill, live in the newsroom with reaction to the verdicts. Kim. Yeah. Hi, Karen. Good afternoon. For years, as you know, Harvey Weinstein's behavior was somewhat considered a dirty little secret in Hollywood, but sexual misconduct accusations arose in 2017, and then charges were filed in New York. The trial produced lurid testimony and passionate arguments. Defense attorneys say they are confident about appealing, while prosecutors say they prove their case. Weinstein is a vicious serial sexual predator who used his power to threaten, rape, assault, trick, humiliate and silence his victims. There are several issues on appeal. It's not like one little thing to hang our hat on. There are multiple issues, and this is not Arthur Idala's opinion. This is the opinion of people much smarter than I am who have read the transcript, and they said you basically got a free ride here because the appellate court is going to throw it out. Well, Weinstein, seen here in earlier video, was handcuffed and taken into custody. The judge requested he be held in an infirmary after his lawyers said he needed medical attention. So the crimes Weinstein was convicted of carry a sentence of 5 to 25 years in prison. Sentencing is scheduled for March 11th. A lot of people will be watching that decision closely as well. We will be too. And for now, Karen, we'll send it back to you for more news of the day. All right. Thank you, Kim. Sure. The coronavirus crisis has financial markets in a free fall this afternoon. The Dow Jones plunged right after the opening bell and was down more than a thousand points for a time. Struggled to gain ground all day long. Let's take a look right now at the big board and the latest numbers. It is down more than 1,000 points. Investors are worried the spread of the virus will slow economic growth. World health officials are trying to keep things in perspective. One of the reasons for the growing concerns is an outbreak in Italy. More than 200 people are now infected in that country with five deaths reported so far. Medical investigators still haven't pinpointed the origin of Italy's outbreak. The country has put up checkpoints on its northern borders and store shelves are empty in some towns as panicked residents stocked up. In spite of the new numbers, the World Health Organization is not ready to declare a pandemic. For the moment, we are not witnessing the uncontained global spread of this virus, and we are not witnessing large-scale civil diseases or deaths. Does this virus have pandemic potential? Absolutely, it has. Are we there yet? From our assessment, not yet. While the outbreak is not being called a pandemic, in addition to Italy, there are concerns about 12 deaths in Iran. Five countries boarding Iran have reported their first infections, and all those cases have links to Iran. South Korea has reported 833 infections. The global total is up to 79,000. The World Health Organization now believes the coronavirus seems to have plateaued in China between January 23rd and February 2nd. Four De La Salle players in court charged in connection with the school's hazing scandal. Three of them entered not guilty pleas. Those three are to have no contact with the complaining witness. The fourth no student is meeting with an attorney witness. before continuing. The hazing incident happened in October of 2019 and included students being forcibly held down and prodded with a broomstick while their clothes were on. We're also getting our first look at Brian Makarborski, the man who allegedly hid cameras inside a Shelby Township tanning salon. He was formally charged this afternoon with multiple felonies. Police believe he hid cameras inside of the Chili Pepper Salon on 25 Mile and Van Dyke. The 38-year-old was arrested Friday after a search warrant was executed at his house. Oh, we sure had some great weather this weekend. Bad news, though. Things are going to change. Winter is knocking on the door once again. Andrew Humphrey is in for Ben this afternoon. And, Andrew, how long do we have to mentally prepare for the next hit we get? Well, Karen, we do have some time, and you're exactly right. We, were, we went from spring over the weekend to now winter. It will feel like winter and look more like winter over the coming days. Winter Storm Watch 
Not in effect now, but it will be in effect for Detroit and all of Southeast Michigan. Note, it doesn't go into effect until late tomorrow night, all day Wednesday into early Thursday. What's happening now? We have clouds overhead. The areas of green you see here, those are raindrops in the atmosphere trying to make it to the ground. Here in portions of Livingston County, Oakland County, where we have those darker areas of green, we're seeing some sprinkles and light rain. The main action of rain and the circulation of the atmosphere is still to our south and west, but it is still heading this direction. So what does that mean? It means we keep the clouds in place. It's now 47 degrees, but temperatures fall from here. Rain and snow start to enter the area later on this evening and tonight. Very widely scattered rain and snow. Not much accumulation tomorrow, but accumulating snow more possible, more likely Tuesday night and Wednesday. We'll discuss this more and snow totals coming up. All right. Thank you, Andrew. The city of Los Angeles is saying goodbye to basketball legend Kobe Bryant and his daughter Gianna, who died with seven others in that helicopter crash last month. Bryant is being honored with words and music. So baby, kiss me. Before they turn the lights out. Beyonce opened the public memorial with song, then Brian's widow spoke to the gathering at the Staples Center. She reminisced about her husband and 13-year-old daughter and gave them a final personal message. May you both rest in peace and have fun in heaven until we meet again one day. We love you both and miss you forever and always. Mommy. On the same day as the memorial, Vanessa Bryant filed suit against the owner of the helicopter involved in the crash, claiming the pilot, who also died, was negligent. Still ahead, first at four. Many of you might stop by the Costco food court for a quick and expensive meal, but some of you may be out of luck in just a few weeks. We'll talk about a Costco crackdown. Also, a new immigration policy is going into effect today. What it does and why one Supreme Court justice is raising concerns about the highest court in the land. Up first, he told the world he was the victim of a racist and homophobic attack. Today, actor Justice Millette returns to a Chicago courtroom. That story right after the break.